my name's Lydia and welcome to my channel. It is 20 to 9 on Monday morning which means it is time to start a new weekly reading vlog. It is incredibly cold today. I have work at 11 which means a good two hours to read Legendborn. I started this last night and I didn't expect to get very far through because the font is so small. This is, I swear it's like at least two point sizes smaller than the usual font. I ended up reading 100 pages last night and really enjoying it. So, so far this is a very good wreck from Row. I like the world building. It's, well, it's like rooted in the real world, which I really enjoy. Gentle intro to fantasy, which is great for someone like me who isn't a massive fantasy reader and I'm still sort of getting used to it. So this is really well written so far. Really like the main character, Brie. So I'm really interested to see where it's gonna go. It's very compelling so far. Need to finish this hopefully tonight. Oh no, I, I can finish it tomorrow because to stay on track I need to read two books every three days and I've done two books in three days. This is the first day of the next three days and I need to read this and XOXO by Axio. XOXO should be quite a quick and easy read because it's YA contemporary. There's no like world building or fantasy elements to get used to. The only problem with that is I chose it as my start book at 3pm prompt. Did not think about the fact that I'm at work for the next five days. I don't get a break to, to read a book unless I have my lunch at 3pm. If I... I do finish work at 3.30 tomorrow, so maybe if I take a really late lunch I can finish lunch at like 3.05, start this in the last five minutes of my lunch, then do a bit more work and go home, read. We'll see how that goes. If I can't start it at 3pm then I can switch it out for another one of the um, snack prompts in Magic Kingdom or maybe it's a show prompt which oh the show prompt yeah um, I can switch it out for the one that is an anticipated release because XOXO was a really anticipated release I pre-ordered it and then I saw it was on Scrib so I cancelled the pre-order and then I didn't like the narrator so then I reordered it once Maddie talked about how amazing it was on her cozy reading vlog on with the show it's quarter to nine I want to try and get like 150 pages of this read maybe so then I'll be halfway which puts me in a good position to read some tonight. Don't know if I've got anything going on tonight. I don't think so because there are no weekly reading sprints with Ro. Pris does have all day sprints today. Well, not all day, but daytime sprints today when she's going to be like cleaning and adulting and doing a bit of reading. And I'm sad that I won't be there to, to watch those because they start at 11 and that's a bit tight when I start work at half 11. So maybe I'll catch up on those tonight and read some more. <laughs> Tuesday night. My shoulders are not this big, it's just a very fluffy jumper. I finished Legendborn last night while I was on Rose Sprints and this book is incredible. I didn't know what to expect because I've heard so many good things but like I'm not into King Arthur, fantasy is not usually my genre. You need to read this book. Brie is such an incredible character. The writing is incredible. I really love the world building. I especially loved that it is set in modern day like normal world is set in North Carolina. The magic is really intriguing. This is just a really great book. As Rose said, there's a lot of hints at potential polyamory. It's unlikely to happen because it's traditionally published and it's YA, but there is so much chemistry between Brie and Nick and Brie and Cell and Cell and Nick. Why not just get them all together? That would be great. Um, so yeah, this was five stars, uh, the full five. This was 10 out of 10, which is the first time I've had a 10 out of 10 since Jade City, also recommended by Ro. So there's a theme there. Today I've started book three of Spoopathon and Magical Hopathon, which is XOXO by XEO. I did previously try to read the audiobook of this and I had to stop like halfway through chapter one because I could not get on with the narrator's accent. Or, well, not that accent, just the way they narrated. It's like I could hear the inside of their mouth because I'm very fussy about narrators and I thought oh that's a shame because I wanted to read that book and now I can't read the audio so I've got the physical copy I'm 140 pages in and I absolutely love it so far it's really cute and I've learned that this is like my favorite trope or one of my new favorite tropes when it's like the ordinary person meets a superstar but doesn't know they're a superstar and they fall in love and then find out they're a superstar and it's like forbidden romance. Really good, really cute, really like this so far. And I'm in love with this cover because look at this for a naked hardback, it's adorable. I am in love with this and I'm so glad I'm enjoying this book because I want to display it 
as a naked hardback like facing out on my shelf and I couldn't do that if I hated the book. I'm nearly halfway. I yeah I hope it stays as good as it is. I, I'm sure it will because Maddie talked about how much she loved it and we seem to have really similar reading tastes. I think this is going to be a four or five stars. Yeah I will finish this by tomorrow and then I'll still be on track for reading two books every three days because tomorrow's the sixth and this is my fourth book. <laughs> trying to edit my next weekly vlog but I have to do it all one-handed because Lola needs attention and she won't settle unless I'm holding her so. So I changed XOXO from my read it at 3 p.m for Magic Harpathon to my anticipated release because I couldn't get a way to start it at 3 p.m exactly so I changed XOXO from my read it at 3 p.m for Magic Harpathon to my anticipated release because I couldn't get a way to start it at 3 p.m. exactly. I went to Starbucks yesterday and got about 100 pages read and then I came home and I managed to finish it off and this was really cute. This ended up being a 9 out of 10 so four and a half stars. Just like your perfect YA romance. Really sweet. I really enjoyed the k-pop aspect and the music school aspect and the friendships and Jay Woo and Jenny's relationship. Yeah, it was really sweet. And yeah, of course the covers, massive bonus. This is definitely gonna go on a shelf somewhere once I've like rejigged my shelves. This was a really fast read as well. It's like 337 pages. And I think I read that in like th three hours, maybe just over three hours. So a perfect short, cute YA romance to add to your list. And it fulfills X for my A to Z challenge which I was really struggling to find a book for. I did actually see Axio tweet last year about it saying a good reason to buy it was to fulfill the X if you're doing the A to Z challenge. Good advice because that's the main reason I bought this in the first place. Read this book if you like K-pop, if you like slightly messy teenage characters, sometimes making slightly messy decisions, uh, not f always knowing what their priorities should be because who knows what our priorities are anyway. I really enjoyed the Korean high school drama school music school aspect of this. There wasn't that much drama, very little unnecessary drama, which is quite rare. I usually get really annoyed by the pathetic drama in some YA books. So yeah, this was 9 out of 10. Highly recommend. That means I have finished the first four books of Spoopamon and Magic Hopathon. I'm now on to number five, which is aptly the intimidating book prompt for Magical Hopathon because is Black Sun by Rebecca Rowanhorse. Now this isn't a long book, it's 436 pages, but I'm completely intimidated by this. Ro talks really highly of it, it's one of her highest rated books of the year, she gave it like 9.87 on Core Pile, but it's like intense fantasy. It's not the sort of thing I would usually read although I am reading a lot more stuff like this at the moment. I am 74 pages in and don't fully understand what's going on. I did start this one on audio a while ago and I think I got five chapters in and I just had no clue and part of that was because one of the pronouns of one of the characters are what I thought were pronounced as Z and Z and the narrator was pronouncing them like she and she and it sounded like another character's name or just she, her pronouns. So I got really confused trying to listen to that and I couldn't tell how many characters there were. So reading it is a lot easier and I'm, yeah, I'm interested to see where this one's gonna go because I really have no clue. I know convergence is a thing that's gonna happen. I'm not sure what convergence is. Um, I find that the back cover, although that's quite a lot of information, it doesn't tell you very much, but I trust Ro. She has very rarely led me wrong. Um, I think there's only one book that she's recommended as a five star that I hated, which was The Once and Future Witches, but she recommended Jade City and Jade War, 10 out of 10. And she recommended Legendborn, also 10 out of 10. I think she might have recommended Amari and the Night Brothers to me, which I gave five stars as well. So hopefully this lives up to the hype. I've seen a lot of people talking about this one. I did try a Rebecca Roanhorse before, 
want to say Trail of Lightning, I'm pretty sure that it was the same author that I ended up abandoning because I got bored halfway through. But this is a completely different vibe. Like, I'm gonna try and read the back again and see if I can figure out what this is about. Okay, I have just read the back of the book and now after reading a few chapters, it does make a lot more sense. That makes me feel a lot better about reading this book. I kind of have more of an idea of what I'm in for now and I can place the characters and their names now which I wasn't able to do when I was listening to the audio. I do often find audio and fantasy can be a difficult combination, especially when fantasy books often have made up names and places that are very difficult to spell and pronounce. If you're hearing a name for the first time, you have no idea how it's spelt. This one might take me a while because it's heavy fantasy. I have until the 9th, I think, to read this and the next book, which is Our Child of the Stars which is quite a long book. I don't know anything about it though. I think it's like light sci-fi. <laughs> I'm not fully sure it could be contemporary as far as I know. Oh, you can see it there. I know virtually nothing about that one, but it's one that my mum gave me about three years ago. So it's high time I get to it. So I have until Saturday, end of Saturday, I think, if I want to stay on track. Uh, so that should be plenty of time. It's the sixth today, is it? Seven, eight, nine, yeah. So <laughs> end of Saturday to finish Black Sun and Our Child of the Stars. So I'm not sure if there are sprints on Friday. I feel like Rome might have some. Um, if so, I will be joining those. There are sprints tonight, but I've been hanging out with my family. I did start, um, but ended up having to leave the, the sprints before any actual sprinting started. Plus I do tend to get a bit overwhelmed in sprints with a lot of people. And I think there were five or six people on the sprint with like 200 in the chat, so. <laughs> It was a bit overwhelming. It is Saturday morning and I haven't read much at all recently. I'm still halfway through Black Sun. I have just started listening to the audio as well to try and get through it a bit faster because to stay on track I need to finish this book and Our Child of the Stars today. That is not looking too likely. Oh, you can really see my roots in this light. That's bad. <laughs> I have got some time alone in the house today because my parents have gone out and my brother's gone back to Manchester. So it's just me and the dog right here with me. I finished Black Sun last night and unfortunately I really didn't enjoy it. I gave it two stars in the end. I just felt like it didn't really go anywhere. There was loads of build up and then nothing. Like the end felt like it ended halfway through a sentence virtually. Massive disappointment. I really liked the queer rep and then there just doesn't wasn't enough story for me. So that was a that was a big disappointment. And then I finished yeah, I was supposed to go on to um Our Child of the Stars for my gifted to you slash beautiful cover, uh, or Instagrammable cover, I think it was. And I ended up changing that to Murder Book by Hilary Fitzgerald Campbell, um, which fulfilled Gifted to You because it's a Net Galley arc. And I changed from beautiful Instagrammable cover to a mashup of two genres because it's like memoir but also true crime. I liked that more, that was a four star. I really enjoyed true crime and I love graphic novels so that was a better note to end the night on. Then I was supposed to read The Bear and the Nightingale for autumnal cover and I've switched to The Grimrose Girls because it's also autumnal, it's very red, there are apples and leaves on the cover and I'm trying to get through my net galley backlog which if you've watched my latest video you'll see I have quite a few books to read. I won the giveaway that Pris held when she hit 1000 subscribers on YouTube which is an amazing achievement because she hit it in like four days. People love Pris and really want to see her sprints and I'm so proud of her and she sent me a book off my wish list and it arrived. This is Bunny by Mona Awad and I've heard so much about this so I'm really excited that this is the book that Pris chose from my wish list so thank you Pris. This is, I, I don't really know what genre it is because it sounds slightly dark academia but then people call it like genius and hilarious so it sounds like a bit of a mash up but it is set in a university and there's a writing click and they all call each other bunny and it just sounds like right up my street I'm really excited to start this one and Pris did say that she reckoned it was a good October read so I might try and find a way to put it on my TBR if I can get all 20 books read before the end of the month then I will definitely be picking bunny up and maybe I'll slip it somewhere in the middle if it's what I feel like one day I mean, I feel like reading it right now, to be honest. I did manage to stay on track. By the end of Saturday, six books read. And then Sunday, I started reading Grimrose Girls by Laura Pohl. And I finished that as well. Um, that is, I was supposed to be reading The Bear and the Nightingale for Autumnal Cover and Beautiful Cover for Spoopathon and Hopathon. Um, and I ended up switching that out and putting the Grimrose Girls in because I wasn't really feeling fantasy after Black Sun being such a letdown. And my Netgalley e-arc list is 
so big but I've got it down to 16 now so that's two books read this weekend off it um Grimrose Girls was a three out of five well a two and a half that I rounded up mass well not massive disappointment it just it wasn't anything like what it what I thought it was going to be the writing felt really juvenile and I know it wasn't supposed to be the young end of YA because of the like horror aspects and the de descriptions of some of the deaths of the girls which were pretty gross so it was a bit of a disconnect there and it just felt really flat and basic like the characters were just caricatures really and I didn't connect with any of them and you've got four protagonists and I just didn't care for them I didn't get much of their backstory they didn't have personalities that jumped off the page and the plot didn't really work for me to be honest either I think even two and a half might have been too generous now that I'm thinking more about it because the magic elements just came out of nowhere and made no sense the book and its curses made no sense it was yeah it was a bit of a fail really I finished that last night and then I immediately rolled over and picked up Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. This is for new genre for Spoopathon and a non-human character for Magical Hopathon because this is told by Clara who is an artificial friend and so far I'm only 20 pages in and I'm enjoying it so far. It's a really easy read. Um, I've never read a Kazuo Ishiguro book before but I've heard a lot about him. I've seen very mixed reviews about this on Goodreads. Um, people who I often trust their reviews have given it like two or three stars. Sometimes someone whose views I respect will have a completely opposite opinion as we've seen with Black Sun. So if I finish this, this will be book number eight, um, which means I've got until the 12th to finish it, which is tomorrow. Hopefully I'll finish this tonight. It's not very long, 307 pages. So that's really doable. I've read 22. I'll read some more this morning. I would have read more last night, but I just got really tired and I'd already finished one book that night. So technically I was supposed to film this yesterday but I didn't get around to it and I always have a terrible habit of like getting changed and getting into bed and then thinking oh shit I never film my wrap up so I'm doing a Monday wrap up because now I'm posting my weekly vlogs on Tuesdays which works better for me because I'm not rushing to get it done on a Sunday afternoon so we are 11 days into Hopathon and Spoopathon and I've read seven books which is pretty good going so far I think I'm pretty proud of that I am on track yeah if I finish Clara and the Sun by tomorrow night I'm on track so maybe if I finish it tonight I'll try and read Bunny tomorrow because then I'll still be on track I'll be ahead although it's not my TBR so I won't be ahead I'll just be on track I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope this coming week I will remember to film more content and talk more about the books that I'm reading and maybe read more I think Black Sun took up like four days because I was just not getting into it. If you've enjoyed this vlog or if you've made it this far leave a little book emoji down below. I love to know that you guys are watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.